Welcome to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Time for us to check out the front pages of our national dailies. We have Tunde Kolawale, who's on standby. He'd definitely be making his input on some of the top stories this morning. Good morning, Tunde Kolawale. It's good to have you join us. Good Happy morning, New Year once again. Me. Yes, please. All right, so I'd like to start off with the Daily Independent newspaper this morning, and we'll be looking at uh, the top stories on the Daily Independent newspaper. Uh, the banner caption says 2023 elections, APC presidential battle revs up as Governor Mai joins Rays. Uh, that's the caption. So you have uh, different persons. Probably your surrogate might just be joining the race. Never can tell. I just might. <laughs> I would join the fray if ticket to zone to uh, southeast, says Oji Uzo Kalu. Uh, that's what you find. World Bank sees Nigeria's economy growing. 2.5% in 2022. Quite interesting. Buhari, Jonathan, IBB, Atiku, Lawan, Saraki, Wike, Uzodima, Mons, Shonekon, NS Shonekon, uh, the head of former head of state. President directs flags to be fly at half mast for three days. And away from that, Buhari OK's creation of Diaspora Investment Trust Fund. It's also captioned on the Daily Independent. PDP asks security agencies to invite APC leaders for questioning. Those enforcing sit at home are criminals. I mean, I'm really shocked by a statement from the indigenous people of Biafra. That's IPOP. Quite interesting. 2023 presidency, why Tunubu dis declaration won't stop Vice President Yamashiba Njo. Uh, that's what the VPA is quoted to say. No aspirant is better placed to succeed Buhari than supporters are saying all of that shake up in nigerian army uh, the details will be available if you check it and covid 19 fcta to shut out unvaccinated staff and visitors from january 17 uh, that's going to be a lot of drama but that's the much we can take this morning on the daily independent newspaper now to the punch newspapers big story buni malami moved to block convention Governors rise against interim party chair. Three governors, justice minister, push consensus agenda to block Tinubu. Someone is manipulating convention not to hold, says progressive governors DG. And also Malami doesn't hold any position in the APC, plays no role, says uh, media aid. Umari, Umahi rather, meets Buhari, declares 2023 presidential ambition. Again, suspected headsmen strike in Undo, kill two on a farm, gone down three rescuers. Still on the punch, workers' union fears job losses as uh, Standard Chartered closes Nigerian branches. 2,248 megawatts of power stranded monthly in 2021 uh, despite blackouts. And also subsidy mobilized for protests, NLC directs affiliates and CSOs. Buhari, Jonathan, Obasanjo, governors mourn as ex-ING head Shonekon dies at 85. We can also find on the punch, federal government overshoots debt servicing by 1.15 trillion naira in 11 months, uh, says a document. Those are the major stories on the punch this morning. All right, away from the punch newspaper, let's check out the nation. And uh, the caption says, convention divided APC governors seek Buhari's help and... Underneath, the PGF meeting shifted. Keteka committee can't be stampeded. That's also another one underneath the board caption. Why businesses are shrinking by World Bank and Super Eagles soar above ferros in the Afcon tie. And excitement over Tunubu's declaration, presidential bid declaration. Coast clear for Lekon Balogun Ulubado. Uh, that's also another one. And... Flags fly at half mast for ex head of state Shonekon Omai joins 2023 presidential race. These are the headlines on the nation. And now to the Guardian newspapers, just a few here. 2023, like Tinubu, Omahi informs Buhari of interest in presidency. Suggests political solution to Southeast insecurity. Wants Oaneza to stay off politics. Oshimbajo not threatened by Tinubu's declaration, says support group. National convention, courts may run affairs of APC, stakeholders won. And APC poses no threat to PDP in 2023, Wiki boasts. 
national flag uh, to fly at half mast as Nigerians pay tributes to Shunekon. Also on the uh, Guardian this morning, Buhari OK's investment trust fund to promote foreign remittances. Bandits kill man, kidnap pregnant wife and children, others in Kaduna. IPOB disowns enforcers of sit-at-home order, condemns shooting in Enugu. 15 women, 20 children rescued and 50 others feared trapped as church collapses in Delta. I think those are the stories that we can share on The Guardian this morning. To Nicola Wale, good morning once again. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, my brother. There's a couple of interesting stories. I'm not sure which you would like to kick off from. Well, uh, let me start from the passage of the system. So, the is a former head of state. You will recall that when Nigeria was in serious crisis, with regards to transition from the military to civilian. And the, the then military of state didn't want to relinquish power. All sorts of uh, programs, all sorts of initiatives, all sorts of pressures that seem to air. At the end of it all, she's a national emerged as a um, head of state. Even though he wasn't uh, a military man. But the truth is that uh, whether it is constitutional or constitutional, because if you recollect, the matter went to court, and I think uh, Honorable Justice Dolapo uh, declared the government of Chippewa and Senecom as illegal. But the truth of the matter is that uh, that period of our history cannot be erased. And so, for that reason, he is being treated as um, a former head of state. I will also want to remember him as uh, a great businessman. You remember at the time, he was the chairman and the managing director of UAC of uh, Nigeria. And during his stewardship of chairman and MC, that company witnessed uh, a lot of prosperity. It was been fine. I remember it was under him that uh, Mr. Biggs, uh, an entry business uh, started, and it was due well until uh, he left. Well, the summary of it all is that uh, Chief Enesoneko was uh, also a very great friend of the military. Because if he wasn't, he couldn't have been nominated or allowed to become a military head of state. Furthermore, he appears to me to be somebody who plays his politics like that of the Kaduna Mafia. He hardly addresses press conference, you hardly see him in public, but he knows what buttons to press when it comes to power articulation. He also has friends in the high places who have regard for him and for whom he also has uh, very good regard. We will at this time treat him as a former head of state, look at him as a successful businessman, and to that extent, give him all the respect that he deserves, even though we may not agree with the way and manner he has handled the country, for example, and then some of the things the public did when he was um, the chairman and MD of the USA. My condolence to his family. My condolence to the entire Nigerian people. All right. He's uh, great to rest in perfect peace. That's all right. Uh, let's move away from uh, the Shona Khan's case and uh, look at the Daily Independent where... A lot of persons might just be joining the race. You have Governor Mai joining the race. And Ojus or Kalu saying that he probably would join if, you know, the ticket has been zoned to the Southeast. Uh, what are your thoughts on the 2023 um, elections and the candidacy we're already having? Well, I hope that 2023 election holds. Uh, if it holds, it will be great for Nigerians. 
But they hold. What do you mean but when you say mean, if it holds, you hope it holds? Well, what I'm saying this is that when you look at the, the high level of insecurity, both urban and rural insecurity, it's a very, very great threat to the successful conduct of that election. If you also look at the economic uh, situation of the country, the bankruptcy of the country, where the money will come from to finance that election is still a mystery to me. Furthermore, all the different political parties that we have in the country today, they are all in disarray. Look at the front page of one of the papers. The APC has found it difficult to hold its convention, even though they've been planning it for almost two years now. Then, you also looked at what is happening internationally with regards to Nigeria getting funding to organize some of these elections, as we used to do before. I doubt it. With the COVID pandemic that we have in our hands, and that the whole world has its hands, that we will get the kind of support that we usually get for the conduct of that election. Furthermore, chances are that not many people who want to turn out to either vote or to register from 2023, if the whole world has not conquered COVID. Uh, 19 before that time. Those are my fears. Why I think it might be difficult, if not impossible, to hold that election. As regards to the candidates, let us be fair to them. Any Nigerian, according to constitution, who has read up to at least Kusat level, and who is a Nigerian, by part or by whatever, is allowed under our law to aspire to become the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. We cannot I mean, take that away from anybody who aspires, whether it's the Umari, whether it's the Ojibwe Kalu, whether it's the Ashwazi Amikola Tinubu. But the truth of the matter is that uh, we have to look at the precarious situation in which the country is today and set the benchmark to look at those things I want to see, the qualities I want to see in the presidential uh, aspirant or in the presidential candidate or in the person who is going to lead Nigeria as president. Do all these people who have stepped out now or who are aspiring, do they have, do they meet, or do they meet that benchmark? Do they have those qualifications? My answer is no. Most of them, age is not on their side, their health are not good. They are also businessmen who have interest in the different sectors of the Nigerian economy. And most times, and all over the world, businessmen don't make good politicians. They don't make good leaders, simply because the possibilities are there, that their better interest would always clash with their political interests, and the country and the economy will be the one to suffer for it. Well, um, I, I want us. To, you know, I want to get your thoughts on the idea of going to inform the president of your intentions to run. Because uh, we've seen that from David uh, Umahi, also the Ebony State Governor. I've also seen a reaction from uh, Kingsley Mogalu. Um, I think I believe that is sarcasm, saying that he forgot to inform the president that he is going to be running or he, he plans to contest for president. Um, but of course, uh, Bola Metinibu did the same thing. So, so get you, let's get your thoughts on the idea of going to Asoro to inform is the president. Well, under our law, Nobody is obliged to visit the president when he has a presidential ambition. All the criteria that the president requires to meet is under the Nigerian Constitution. It is also in the Electoral Act. 
Once you have met those conditions, go to Mr. President to seek his uh, consent or to inform him becomes uh, highly superfluous. But you see, meeting Mr. President has become a tradition or a custom in Nigeria. Well, not necessarily. So I, 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 don't think we, I don't think we saw a lot of this um, bef uh, before this administration. Um, I, I don't remember anybody approaching Good Luck Jonathan or um, Foreign President Olusegun Obasanjo to do tell them that they will be running for president. They do. They do. They may not do it openly. It was uh, pretty much the same thing. As we are seeing it being done now. The reason being that uh, you find out if you don't have the packing of somebody like Mr. President, it might be difficult for you to achieve your ambition to become the president of the country. Because the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria will enormous power materially, security-wise, political-wise, and even within the sphere of influence of who votes for who. So it is better for anyone who has that kind of an ambition to, to take it to him and say, look, I have this ambition and seek his support. Because in politics, when you have one number in addition to what you already have, it's a plus plus for you. Furthermore, don't forget that most of these people who hold these scientific offices, like the presidency, like the governor, like a local government chairman, most of them are given by ego. They might see it as a slight that you want to become a local government chairman, you want to become a governor, you want to become a president without seeking their consent, without consulting them. I think that is the reason why some of these people go to the president, sometimes some will go to the governor to tell them that they would like to contest one political office or the other. Recollect that um, Chief Abaribe has gone to the city governor in, I think, uh, is it in Moabia, to inform him that he would like to contest the governorship of the state uh, come 2023. And um, the city governor has said that uh, his ambition will not in any way affect the conclusion of his uh, governorship or performance in office. Well, um, Tunicola, will you also share your thoughts yes. on the um, um, what do you feel might turn out? Because there's also comments with regards uh, uh, Vice President uh, Yamio Shimbajo's camp, you know, and of course uh, his followers saying that uh, Bulame Tinubu's ambition would not deter the Vice President's uh, own ambitions, you know, if he chooses to run for president. And of course, uh, David Umahi, also of the APC. Uh, so it seems like there's going to be a couple of options that the APC, you know, well, well, a couple of people who will want to run under the platform of the APC. How do you see this playing out? Well, uh, the ambition of the VP, uh, Professor Yemi Oshimato, and that of Achiwazu, for example, is a very, very big issue, simply because the two of them are coming from the same camp. And you will remember that Ashiwaja and his supporters have times without number said that um, it was Ashiwaja and Mepola Tinubu that nominated the VP to be the running mate to Mr. President. So if the person you nominated to be the running mate, who eventually became the vice president, is contesting the nature of president, and you are also interested. There is no gain saying that there is going to be a class of interest in that uh, area. And that takes us back to what we had earlier on discussed as to why people go to visit Mr. President to inform him, to seek his consent, and then ask him for support. It is because of things like this. Whoever the President supports between President, uh, Professor Yemi Oshimbajo, and the uh, Ashwati Pola Amir Tinubu is likely to have an edge 
over the other. But looking at uh, Professor Yemi Oshibato, he appears to be playing the game right and leads uh, up to this point. He has never tried to be Kantakero, to be too outward. He's been very diplomatic and uh, cautious in pushing his uh, personal ambition to become the president of the, of the country. Unlike, for example, with due respect, that was the Bola American who approach his own personal uh, uh, ambition. For me, the more the barrier, the more the merrier. Because if we have uh, many people contesting for the presidency, that means we'll be able to have the choice. We can assess, we can scrutinize in a very critical manner, and then go for the test of them. But for me, even between I mean, Professor Shimato and Ashwagibola Tinubu and Umai, I haven't seen any uh, person among them who meets the criteria I would like to see in becoming president of Nigeria from 2023. All of them, age appears not to be on their side. The Umai might have been a problem. There's nothing spectacular about his achievement as governor in the southeast. Uh, Professor Yami Oshimbajo is in charge of the economy. The economy has performed woefully under him. Of course, for uh, Ashwa Chipola Ahmed Sinopu, age is not on his side. He has interest on better in so many areas of our economy. And the lately, he has not been enjoying the, the birth of health. If you look at what Nigeria experienced on that year as well, if you look at what the, the country is experiencing on that President Buhari, no one will want to support the aspirations of Ashiwa uh, Jibola and Tinubu on the ground of some of the issues that are mentioned. H, health wise, and uh, his better business interest all over the place. Yeah. And of course, there are other controversies and baggages okay. that you would have to explain to the Nigerian people during the course of campaign. I would prefer to the color will a more younger person. All right. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, your point has been made as regards uh, the candidacy for the 2023 presidential election. Fingers uh, yeah. crossed. And we look forward to, you know, uh, some other persons joining the race and making their intention known. But we'd like to share your thoughts on this other one. The IPOP is saying that those enforcing sit-at-home order uh, are criminals. Please repeat that again. Those enforcing sit-at-home orders are criminals. This is according to IPOP. Are you sure? What? <laughs> uh, a lot of uh, things are happening in the Southeast that is very, very difficult to explain. Each time there are issues with regard to stealing, infliction of physical bodily harm on people, the government will point an accusing finger on IPOP. And when the government does this, IPOP itself will say that they have no hands in it. Take, for example, the killing of Dr. Akin Yuli, a very noble man. The IPOP people were led or were killed to have had a hand in his death. But the IPOP people have also come out and said, look, that is a noble man. That is a highly respected Igbo person. He's a community leader that we would not have wished any wrong thing to happen to him. We didn't have anything to do with his uh, death. So, and these controversies will uh, keep uh, going on until we address the fundamental issues in the Southeast, which is the agitation of IPOP. And that agitation is not difficult to address. All we require to do is to conduct a referendum in the Southeast 
with regards to whether they want to be independent of Nigeria or they want to remain Nigeria. Whoever so, carries the day. So the question, the the question is, concluded. aren't you surprised yeah. that, you know, at this point, IPOP is saying that those who are enforcing sit at home or the, I mean, those people are criminals. And, and we have over time seen the IPOP enforcing the sit at home order. Uh, does that yeah, make you the and you surprising? So they are saying that uh, IPOP has announced that they have sought the campaign for a sit at home order. That it doesn't all go well for their people. But somehow, some other person continues to enforce that sit at home order. The truth is that uh, there are so many self determination groups in the Southeast today that it is difficult to point a finger accurately that this is the person who is enforcing the sit at home order or the no sit at home order. These are the people who started this. They have called it off. And the sit at home order is still being um, enforced. Then something is wrong somewhere. That's the reason why I said let's concentrate our effort on resolving the fundamental issues in the Southeast. Not that I've scratch the problems on the head. Not that I've scratch the problem on the top. That will not solve the problem. Any serious minded person who realize that the sit at home thing doesn't all go well for the people of the South. It's like weakening yourself before the enemy comes for you. Look at also the directive which it has been alleged, uh, IPOP gave that no cow coming from the South, I mean, coming from the North, should be slaughtered or eaten in the South anymore. They've also banned some groceries and all that. For God's sake, if you remember what happened only in the Nigerian Civil War, it is a cutting off of food supply to the Southeast, the change of currency, and some other uh, programs and activities that were carried out that weakened the agitation, the fight for the African land at that period in time. So if I pop, or any of the self determination groups were to be learning from history, they will not be carrying out the sit at home order that they are carrying out now. They won't be finding cows from the north. They will also not be finding groceries from the north. They also don't require to begin to ask people to start reciting the Piafra anthem in place of the Nigerian anthem item at this period in time. The time is all right for that. Continue the agitation for referendum. And then uh, when that is done, whatever you so desire will follow suit. Okay. Uh, well, um, on the punch also, there's some controversy concerning the APC's convention. It says here, Buni and Malami move to block convention. Governors rise against interim party chair. It also says uh, here, or says three governors, Justice Minister push consensus agenda to block uh, Tinubu. Someone is manipulating convention not to hold, says the prog progressive governor's um, DG. And also Malami doesn't hold any position in the APC. So, I mean, there's some confusion with regards to the APC's convention um, that was, of course, uh, rumored to be going on or to be um, uh, taking place in February. Um, Mr. Kolawale, what, what would you describe this as? And w w why do you think all of this is playing out? Well, what we are seeing the APC can be traced to their history. You and I will remember that that party didn't grow organically. Rather, what happened was that uh, a conglomerate of different political parties came together. They called the assembly legacy party. They formed the APC. And with the APC, it, uh, they used it they use the APC as a title to capture political power at state level and at the federal level. Now that election is coming and different people, different individuals from the original different political parties having ambition to become president, to become governor, then the truth is 
whoever command, whoever is in control of the party structure is likely to get whatever ticket or flag is desired. That is why we are having all these challenges with regards to holding the APC convention. So as to be, uh, the, com the convention will determine the respective flag bearers at uh, different times or in the nearest future. Because without the convention and without you seizing the aim of affairs of the, of the party, you hardly can realize your political ambition, whether you want to be president or you want to be governor. And uh, with regard to Malami, you might say that he's not a member of uh, the executive committee of the APC, but he with enormous power as the attorney general of the federation. You and I will know that when the electoral act was referred to Mr. President for his absence, it is not impossible that Mr. President would also have referred it to the attorney general of the federation, Mr. Malami, to advise him on crosses uh, that concern things like uh, direct um, uh, primary, on issues that concern the electronic transmission of results, and some of these other crucial items. And if whatever advice he gives that the president is likely to follow. Also remember that um, when the Supreme Court said that a city governor shouldn't be the chairman or shouldn't be running the political party, that they cannot be chief executive of their state and also be the chief executive of the party. It was Malami that intervened and said, look, that decision of the Supreme Court is not binding or will not affect the APC as a political party. Whereas the decision of the Supreme Court is very, very clear. If the person who challenged, uh, the, who took the case of the Supreme Court, had joined Buni, that is the present chairman of the APC, in that suit, whatever actions that have been taken by the party, especially with regards to the person who became governor, whose election was challenged, it would have been nullified. It was on technical grounds that the chairman of the APC was not joined in that suit when it was instituted. That was why the APC and the governor, I think the governor of Ondo State, escaped their being asked by the Supreme Court. So it is essential for the control of the structure of the party that is at the root of the inability for the APC to hold its convention this time he had planned to do it. All right. To Nicola Wale, always uh, interesting speaking with you. Thank you so much for your time this morning. And uh, we, Thanks of course, as always, wish you a very interesting day ahead. Thanks for joining us once again. You have a lovely day too. You too. Thanks for coming through. All right. We'll take a short break and, uh, of course, uh, be sharing with you what happened on this day in history back in 2015. Right after that, our first major conversation comes up um, again this morning. The biggest you know, conversation in politics in Nigeria today, political ambitions and, of course, the fate of 2023 and 200 million Nigerians. We'll be back. <laughs>